It's up to you, Catherine, if you want to wait or whatever. I'm cool. The recording started. I was just getting ready to go. <laughs> Here we go. Good morning. Welcome to the Good Saturday morning. morning Mastermind. This is Catherine Clement in Boulder, Colorado. And we're glad you could join us this morning, whether you're joining us live or on the recording afterwards. And we've been gathering together for multiple years now, a good group of friends, and we go over different self-development books. Right now we're reading The Slight Edge by Joel Olstein. And if you want to hold that book up for us, that's awesome. Olson, not Olstein. Olson, sorry about that. Olstein is somebody else. <laughs> that was a different book. <laughs> but uh, The Slight Edge, it's a great book. Lots of people, lots and lots and lots of really influential leaders recommend this book. and. Um, we're certainly enjoying it. Today we're going to be talking about happiness. And in the version of the book that I have, that's chapter 7, I believe. And I'm not sure what chapter it is on Dan's book, but anyway, it's about happiness is what we're talking about. So look for, we realized that when they revised this book, the chapter switched up by maybe one. So it might be chapter 6 for you or chapter seven you would just kind of have to look around but it's on happiness and there's going to be some really good discussion here today so we'll start off uh samantha's away from her computer at the moment but dan go ahead and introduce yourself okay dan sissick here i live in las vegas nevada where uh right now uh the weather in Kind of pretty nice in the eighties and but and got down actually into the fifties at times. So um, um, about the cold, but the overall it's been nice on my power bill. So I'm loving that. <laughs> um, so looking forward to the discussion and uh, hearing what everybody has to say. Awesome, and hopefully some more people will be joining us and they can jump in. I think I hear see Samantha coming on now so she can introduce herself. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, hi, sorry. You're running, I apologize for that. Yep, I'm Samantha Studebaker Carl and um, I'm just, this is a great example of following the slight edge because if I had been, then I'd been on time this morning. But <laughs> anyway, um, be here guys and thanks for going ahead and starting up without me Catherine. i appreciate that hopefully there's i don't can you guys hear that okay well hopefully it won't be too loud we're not too far from the drag strip and so um <laughs> we may hear some of that drag great um okay so anyway that's me <laughs> and i was going to say what are you dragging out there trying to bury or whatever <laughs> I, thought Jason, I thought yeah i thought jason was going to jump on too but maybe he's running behind also yeah i think you know it's funny we, we read these books and yet we're all human right you know we don't follow everything perfectly i sure Try a lot of what we teach, and I learn a lot from it too. But um, I tell you, sometimes I struggle. Well, you guys, but I struggle with things, uh, you know, a lot. But I'm glad that we get together each week and we kind of help hold each other accountable, or then at least, at least we're all showing up here, going, "Hey, I'm learning this, but I'm still struggling to implement it." And um, we're all right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not trying to pretend we're something that we aren't. Uh, but a happiness, I love it. It's, it's awesome, right? What do you think, Dan? You want to be happy? Well, I was going to say, I think what this does is uh, when we get on here and start a human and that um, we try to live and, and put and adopt and uh, establish things we've gone over in the different books we've gone over over the years. Um, but that it shows that one, we definitely are a human Two, two even the people out there that have attained the goals that they wanted to attain, that we're all striving to attain for our personal dreams and goals. 
he probably did the same thing at times. You know, they probably had their moments and their times and their, where they had to dust themselves off, pick themselves up and say, hey, oh, this was just an off week or off day or sometimes even an off year. You know, things happen and life happens and you just, but as long as you keep applying as like in this book, the slight edge, just the little things every day as best you can. There and as long as you, then the big thing as long as you don't quit. So that's what my little bit on what you were just saying about. You know, I love the fact that in this book, he addresses different areas of our life, like this particular chapter on happiness. We can just do little things to change our level of happiness. And um, in the book, uh, this particular chapter, he's talking about how psychologists have figured out that happiness is not what they thought that it was. And that it's actually, it's, it says here, let's see, one of the things they have found is that happiness isn't some big thing you not something you chase after it's not something out there that you have to go out of your way to hunt down like some sort of psychological or sorry it's right in front of our noses it's not something you pursue it's something you do or to be more accurate it's a lot of some things you do something some simple things you do every day in fact or as the case may be don't do every day and I feel like I've found in my life that that is completely true, but it's also a matter of um, not doing things as well to cause yourself to be unhappy because I, I feel like a lot of unhappiness in people's lives is things that they do that they shouldn't be doing necessarily, like focusing on the crap that they don't versus focusing on the things they do like. And I mean, that's a huge thing because if all we're doing is thinking about all the stuff that's wrong or isn't going our way or that we're not doing the way we think we ought to be doing or, you know, I mean, then, then we get more upset than it would be if, um, if we just kind of let those things go and then refocus on the things that are happy about, um, and we could talk about that in all areas of our lives where we're discussing our relationships or watching things that happen at work or whether we're discussing, you know, business, you know, whatever it is, political, you know. Yeah, one of the, the, the masterminds that we were doing a few weeks ago, I was struggling because we had this guy out here mowing. He was making so much noise, it was making it really difficult for me to participate in the discussion. And um upset about that guy that was mowing, you know, and I was making myself more upset than I needed to be. But then um you know, but the thing is the other day I think it was more important for everybody else to to talk and say what they had to say, and I didn't need to be talking so much. That was um that was okay. Karen. Oh my God, we see you on video. Were you on video last week? I haven't even had a chance to watch the recording. Awesome to see you in person. It's just amazing. Wonderful. Hopefully we can hear you too. Where'd you go? You ran away. <laughs> oh, other Sandy too. Awesome. Anybody else have any thoughts on this whole happiness thing of focusing on the things that we're happy about and not so much on the things that we aren't? Yeah, I can sure tell you because I'm, I work customer service. Um, well, I'm in charge of customer service for a network marketing company and of course, many of us here are in network marketing companies, so this is a this is a, a subject you guys are familiar with. But I can tell you that people, like you said, people 
some people, thank God, not everybody, but some people, for whatever reason, they want to focus on the 10% of things that needs improvement or, you know, that has a few glitches or, you know, that needs to be corrected, but they want to focus on that 10% instead of the 90% of the things that are going well and <laughs> being, you know, all these amazing things are happening and, and all these crazy obstacles are being overcome. And yet like, there's one little thing over here that needs an improvement, and that's where some people will put all of their focus. And it doesn't matter whether it's a network marketing company, whether it's your spouse, whether it's, you know, a coworker, or what the situation is, they're, they're, and I, and I, I don't mean to put it all off on like some people, right? Because we all do this. I, I mean, I do this, you know, I'll catch myself, um, something will come up. I don't get, you know, I get two hours sleep or something and the next day is here and things have to continue and go on. And, you know, you start to get a little attitude and start focusing on only getting two hours sleep or whatever, instead of like all the other million amazing, wonderful things happening in your life. And um, I, I don't know why as humans, we we do that, but it is like a human characteristic. And uh, the, I guess the key is to, to catch yourself and to really think about where are you focused? You know, what are you focused on? If it's, if you're unhappy in your marriage right now, where are you focused? Are you focused on just the things that your spouse is doing that's pissing you off? You know, are you focused on all of the, wonderful qualities of your spouse. I mean, I'm divorced at the moment, so I don't have that situation. I'm not dating or anything, but I can tell you, looking back at, at past marriages, I was absolutely guilty of focusing on the wrong things. I, I mean, I, I freely admit that. <laughs> My focus was not in the right place, right? I, I didn't look at all the amazing, wonderful things. I looked at the things that weren't working and, and, Thankfully, you know, should I get in a situation like that again, my mindset is straightened up a little bit. But, you know, we all need, we all get into the habits of stinking thinking. We all need um, to cleanse ourselves and, you know, reprogram, reboot ourselves, you know, admit, admitting to yourself that there's an issue is certainly a major part of it. You know, being able to say, yes, I I'm focusing on the wrong things. I need to shift over and look at this, you know, and, and sometimes it's as simple as really just being in a state. I mean, we talk about gratitude a lot, but you can't really be in gratitude if you're focused on all the things going wrong. So you gotta, you gotta shift over your focus and look for the little things, even if it's, you know, the tiniest of things. Um, think about, I always think about all the people that don't have all the luxuries that I have. Even when I was, didn't have very many, I still had more than most. And so, you know, I think that um, it's something that can be corrected, but it's a bad habit. It's a habit that people get into. And that's where this book, The Sight Edge, when it talks about these daily refocusing or these daily actions, that is to get you into better habits because we all know that you know, you just have to think something or do something so many times and for such a period of time before it becomes a habit for you. And so we have to get out of our stinking thinking habits and get into better thinking habits, I guess. <laughs> I was going to bring up, sorry, some. <laughs> I was going to bring up the idea too. Also, as I like what you were saying about you know the stinking thinking, and that's a great way of you know at it because it is thinking you know thinking. But I also think sometimes when we focus on the negatives, we do it. As I think there have been times when I've done it on purpose. It's just because I wanted to make bring that other person or try to put that at that same level I am well you know I'm miserable I don't like feeling like this I think this is all that's wrong and that you know 
to be fixed, not me. And instead, it's really, you know, if we turn around, it's really us. Like you said, we need to change our thinking. We need to change our look and and go back to the looking at them at, you know, in anything, job situation, life situations. I mean, look at all the good things that are around us and all the positive things and all the things that reasons why we did what we initially did and these negative things are just part of the little blips you know that happen through life but if you keep on the focus side uh the positive side then you you know you'll be able to they are what they are and hopefully move forward and that's how i like to look at it sometimes it's me not wanting to admit that it with me that I want to really place it over on them and say, you know, or the situation or, you know, that's or why am I, you know, not in a better position or why is this or why did that person get that promotion or whatever and those type of things. And I think that's how I'm trying to change my thought process. Sandy, Karen, do either of you want to? I don't know where we are. <laughs> I'm trying to catch on here. So, what chapter? Six in your it's, book. Uh, hmm? they, they said the uh, chapter on happiness, which I don't know which chapter that is in our book because in my book I read chapter six last night, so um, I'm not sure <laughs> in our book. Catch on in a few minutes to what, where we're flowing with the conversation. <laughs> and I'll back out. This is Karen. Can you hear me? Is this the first time you've heard me, or have you been able to hear me before? No, we. Ju I just started hearing you. Just Okay. My, my brother sent me a laptop and um, I got it last night about six o'clock and, and I've been playing some just basic things I don't know how to do like, um, like backup person letters and um, uh, copy and paste and, you know, some of those things that you take for granted and you think you can, and then you realize um i'm stuck <laughs> so anyway um so th this is a okay uh, can you tell me just a couple of sentences like you know so um the little piece that we talked about said this or whatever sure let, let me let me see if there, there's a whole bunch of little sections in here that um that we could go through let me see if it has like at the end a little recap thing like it normally does okay essential point chapter seven okay happiness is created by doing some simple easy things and doing them every day success lead to happiness it's the other way around more happiness creates more success uh, elevated levels of happiness Happiness, elevated levels of health, performance, social involvement, marital fulfillment, financial and career success, and longevity. Grades is the key, oh, is key to making the slight edge work in your life. And then it says, uh, Sean Aker's five habits. Number one, every morning write down three new things you're grateful for. Number two, journal for two minutes a day about a positive experience 24 hours. Number three, meditate daily for a few minutes. Number four, at the start of every day, write an email to somebody thanking them. And number five, get 15 minutes of simple cardio exercise a day. So that's kind of what he talked about through there. But there's a bunch of different things that we could um, <clears throat> go over. We saw you on video when you first would be happy to see you again, Karen.
Was it a fluke? <laughs> it was it an accident? And you were like, no. <laughs> What was that you said? What, we, what was that you said about an accident? I'm not hearing anything. Are you guys hearing me? We're hearing you. Yes. So I said uh, we. So when you first jumped on, I and I said, was that an accident? Because we were happy to see you. Well, it was a surprise because this this um having a laptop my first laptop is uh, uh <laughs> i guess every time you get a new computer it's you know it's a three or four or five year upgrade depending on how long it's been since you've had the last one but yeah i've got stuff i need to figure out and i'll be talking to him i don't know if he i don't know if he has a laptop i'm not sure how this came anyway uh, this is pretty nice, but I did want to mention a little something about the happiness. Um, I had the opportunity to have a little bit of therapy probably a couple of years ago now. And um, I remember saying to her, you know, I don't know when I was last happy. And she said, got up, and she went over to her whiteboard, which was on the wall, and she, she drew this bell curve, and she said, well, I've seen you happy. You were, you were just um, kind of laughing a little bit about something your grandson said. And she said what it was, and I thought, well, that's true. She said, I think she said one other thing. And then she used her diagram of the bell curve to talk about how um, – you know, you you don't just get happy. Most of us don't just get happy, and we're just like in happy uh, like the whole day. You, you just kind of notice that there's um, stuff going on that you like, that you that you, you value, and so forth. Well, that weekend I was sitting on the phone with a friend of mine, and I was sitting on a wood bench in the backyard. And the, <laughs> the back air is basically trashed, and it was, you know, not a particularly, you know, beautiful scene by any means. But all at once, I realized I was feeling really nice, really good. And I realized I was happy, and that it was because I was talking to this friend that I just enjoy so much. Where we talk, she always contributes to my happiness and I thought oh oh, oh that's talking about and so then I told her I told my friend that I was feeling happy and we talked about it a little bit and I I have kept that in mind ever that you know like right now I'm looking out through my open door at the bougainvillea bush with a little uh, wood uh, bird feeder hanging there I don't have <laughs> I don't have any bird feed, but, uh, you know, it, it makes me, I'm in this little uh, piece of wood, which I'm not, you know, I'm in flat old Phoenix or Chandler, but I've got this, this break here that just shows me that and it makes me happy. So uh, I, I do think that happiness is uh, what you said before I got into this. Thanks. One of the things I think you mentioned uh, there on one of the points is to, he's said, suggesting down, I think, two things that made you happy that day or that went well that day. Um, and that's something I was <laughs> for a little while at one point. And uh, it reminded me of this. Which I need to get back on this too. Uh, it's called a happiness jar. I was listening to, um, I don't know, even what it was, a webinar like a couple years ago, and there was a suggestion of every day write on a piece of paper something that day that went well or made you happy and put it in the happiness jar. And then, on, you know, if you're having a bad day or something, you can look in your happiness jar and be like, oh yeah, this happened and this happened, and just read few moments. So, yeah, I started that <laughs> a couple of years ago, and I just pulled this out again recently. Like, I should do this again, things in the happy jar. 
And so I thought that was a cute idea. <laughs> I love that idea of making the happiness jar. Why not, you know, for so many, well, I don't know, it's, you hear about things like the swear jar, you know, when you use a swear word and you have to put money in the jar because you swore, but what if we had something completely different every time we were happy? We put that in the jar, right? And we started acc accumulating all these happiness moments and sing on those things, wouldn't we? have been so much more happier as a culture. I don't know. I'm just just kind of an idea that a lot of our unhappiness and our attitudes about how we feel in life come from the people that came before us and our, our grandparents and our the people that we're around the most. You know, I mean they say that you're like the five people you spend the most time if you look at them and you see, you know, are they happy? Do they talk happy thoughts? Do they focus on happy things or do they complain and bitch and moan and all of it if that's the case then that's probably what you're doing too so I don't know just a thought yeah that's a good <laughs> point it's like our and our a lot of times punished for things we're doing wrong rather than being rewarded for the good things so yeah if we could bet that that could change a lot of things I think for kids and growing up good point I really like that idea too, primarily because I find that when I start my complaint, you know, especially if things are not going really well on the computer or, you know, whatever happens to be, it feels to me, you know, there's always something. There's just always something, isn't there? There's just always something. And if you could pull out of your happiness jar and say, geez, out of the blue, my brother sent me a laptop last week or um you know my sister did or i i just think it would be so good to have that actual little in hand uh reminder of all those things great idea well i think that's you know i love the jar idea too i'm trying to think of ways of how you could just make it more incorporated into your everyday life because i think in, in humans we tend to go to the dark side faster than we go to the happy side circumstances like a wedding or a birthday or something like that where that just naturally kind of emotes um happiness and stuff like that but i also think there's an additional part that we're missing and not including in this is joy because there's a different happiness and joy you know and a lot of people don't understand the difference between those two things and joy is more uh, overall sense of being and where you're at and what you're about and you know and it's not contained in circumstances happiness tends to be more contained in circumstances that are going on around you so because a lot of times uh Two can't, you know, happiness and negative, you know, n sadness or whatever really can't coexist together per se. I have to learn to recognize the differences and be able to, like you said, pull out that thought, that random thought of, oh, you know, you know, let me focus on that and move myself from this. And I think Sandy would attest to this, and Catherine would attest move your vibration point up to a higher vibration point to where you kind of pull yourself up into that spot of happiness so then therefore you can continue to work towards being in that positive higher reservation and to work on keeping you there so i think you know the jar is great but i think there's you know we as humans need to find what way more ways to remind ourselves of the good and positive and things that happen in our life that do, which can then turn lead into joy to where we have a more joy filled life that, so we don't get brought down. So is Jason trying to get on? He said something about not recording and I didn't understand. 
Yeah, I don't know. I just sent him the link to our um, to this meeting. You're might be confused as to. I have no idea. Anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, what I wanted to share from what Dan, Dan Brian, uh, I think his name is Brian D. Ridgeway, uh, has a video out that he calls Smile and Brew. And um, I, I'm going to tell you about that. But before I do, I'm going to tell you that there's a woman who teaches writing of meditations. And she suggests that you, before you do that, you deep breathe for 31 breaths. So I've kind of com combined them. And I will sit in my chair, my chair where I do my 30 minutes and all the different things like and I will uh, smile as I take in a breath and, um, and, and try and remember each of those 31 breaths. And I'm paying attention by counting on my fingers. <laughs> you know, getting to 30, 31, I had kind of hands for the second set and the third set. But it does raise my vibration. I mean, that's that Brian. Uh, talks about this in this video is that when you simply do those two things smile and breathe going to raise your vibration and um, I find I just find that a really helpful little tool lots of times uh, the thing I uh, you know I can't think of anything else smile that reminds me of um, <laughs> exercise I read in I Tony Robbins' book, um, The Giant Within, I couldn't think of the name, um, where he said, you know, once a day or like first thing in the morning, just look at in the mirror, smile, the biggest goofy smile you can <laughs> do and just smile at yourself and you end up just cracking up, do at least. Like, I'm just there like with this big smile, looking at myself in the mirror and you just can't help but like, be happy. Um, so that was a fun exercise. I like it. Try it. <laughs> I think one of the first things people have to recognize is that, you know, to, to not have unrealistic expectations, to not feel like you're going to be in bliss 24 seven. I mean, you can, you can take any situation that you're upset about and you can hopefully, you know, pull yourself into a better situation. But if you can't, you know, it's not the end of the world to, to feel sadness or to feel anger or to feel any of these other human emotions. Um, you know, we keep it really real here. And, and that's what I love about this, you know, our, our mastermind, um, you have, I know that it's, you know, we all strive to be happy and positive and everything all the time, but as humans, you know, shit happens. And, Hi, Jason, glad you could join us. And, hey. <laughs> and uh, uh, so sorry. <laughs> it's all right. No, go on, go on. I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> Great to be here, you guys. Really is great. great time. Glad you could join. Uh, you were talking about uh, trying to uh, be upbeat. It sounded like and all the time. Actually, I was saying that it's an unrealistic expectation to think that you are going to be upbeat all the time. Like in the book, it mentioned he was talking about, I believe his mother or somebody. And, and he was talking about how even in the worst of times, she was always positive and she never, ever said, you know, had a bad word to say about anybody. I mean, she sounds like a, a saint, you know, and, and I think that a lot of parents, um, well, you have parents on both sides, you know, you have parents that are, that are, having horrible behaviors that they're showing to their children by talking negatively all the time. But then I think there's another end of the spectrum to that where you have, you know, the, the only positive and I, I get it like from a co-creating standpoint, from an energetic standpoint, from a 
self-development standpoint, I totally get like be positive, stay positive all the time. But if I think, and this is just me personally, I think as parents, you know, if, if we don't let our children see that sometimes we struggle too, you know, if we don't let our children see how we actually handle stress, if we, if we're only presenting that happy face and that everything is great and we, you know, they never see us experience frustration. They never see us have to overcome an obstacle because we never show them the obstacle. Then the first time that they have a totally human experience and they run across frustration or anger or sadness, you know, they don't, they don't have anything. They have no modeling. Like they don't, they, they just think, Oh God, what's wrong with me? Because mom is never sad. Mom is never angry. Mom is never frustrated. Mom never has any of these difficulties or dad or, you know, whoever mom and dad don't deal with any of this stuff. And I think that sets up, unhealthy expectations for them that life is just beautiful and rosy all the time and they don't learn coping skills and they don't learn that happiness is not something you pursue it's something that you do they don't learn that you know if it because they just think that person is automatically happy and then maybe they think they're depressed you know because they're not happy all the time when depression is nothing about not being happy all the time, you know? So, <laughs> so I think that, <clears throat> you know, we can, as much as we try to set these amazing and wonderful behaviors, I think we need to be real. That's what I love about our mastermind. You know, you have to be real and recognize that there is a whole spectrum of emotions that we go through and, um, and we can't learn how to deal with those if we're just pretending like they're not there. Yeah, I think that's such an important point. And yeah, some I noticed this week I was fighting with myself because I was in a down mood and I didn't know why. And I'm just like, I just want to. It's like, you know, you have to flow with it. It's, we're in the human experience and we're going to have ups and downs and we're going to have them. Um, yeah, that, that reminds me of a guy. He's like super positive all the time. Like everything comes out of his mouth is positive. And he's always, la, la, la. and he realized one day that he could completely shut out something in his life that was negative. But he realized he became aware of it like one day, like, you know, there's this negative thing happening in life. And I just purposely avoided it and, had it, and I need to deal with it. And um, so it was interesting because of his wanting to be positive and happy all the time and that he just didn't deal with something in his life that needed to be dealt with. Like that was important. So yeah, we have to deal with things going to be happy sometimes and, um, yeah, be human and realize, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm in a bit of a funk today. Hey, I can be in the funk <laughs> and I'll, I'll get to the happy space again. Because I, I have, that's for myself. I know when I, I'm in a funk or something, um, you know, I'll try to fight to get out of it sometimes, but then realize just be in it. it, it and emotions are beautiful and meant to be in. Um, of course, we don't want to stay there and realize, that, you know, we can get out of them if we, if not to dwell on it, but learn from it and move on. Um, but yeah, good point that we we're human. <laughs> I was going to. I was going to say I can yeah, speak from my personal experience of being abused by my real mom and stepdad, yeah, physically and mentally. So I got a lot of the negative, you know, things in my life and things like that. Whereas I had a grandmother who, I'm. I won't say I didn't see her have some negative points, but who kind of was my balance on the positive side. I, it's weird. I've, I've, I, when I was younger, I guess I taught myself that I wanted to be more. <clears throat> I'd try and look at that side and push the negative out, and I tend to kind of not like the negative and I live there and be there. So I tend to be like you, like this other guy. I tend to be a thing, try to be more positive, more, you know, when people. 
say, are you okay? Are you fine? Or something. If I'm, or if I seem down or look down or something like that, try and put on that. Oh, I'm fine. Or, you know, whatever and stuff like that. And I'm learning more and more as I've gotten older. I need to just let them know, look, I'm bunk or whatever. I'll work through it and I'll get back to my normal self. Just let me have that time and space. But I've had to learn that a little. And I'm still learning it. And it's still a big process for me because of what I've gone through as a kid. I didn't see parents. I mean, my real mom, I remember, would lock herself in her bedroom for days on end and never come out except to refill her uh, iced tea glass. I mean, that's a vivid memory for me. <clears throat> so I don't know if she was battling with her own issues. I I know she had, um, you know, my two brothers, one was uh, born and stillborn, and the other one died of crib death. Between being married at 15 and a half and having me at 16, and then having my sister and then having my two brothers that both ended up being dead and I think she had a lot of psychological and a lot of issues in life that she had troubles handling and that it came out in the forms of what they did to me and my sister. So in that aspect, you know, it's really, I, I have to I have to shape my life in a lot of ways of how I frame and look at things. And I purposely have to be careful because there have been times where I've just wanted, really just wanted to shut the door and shut the world out and tell it to go away and just leave me alone. Just let me sit here and stay here. You know, I've had to really, you know, force myself, make myself get up and go out and live and experience because that is life. I don't ever want to shut that out. But it's also, you know, I've had to learn some skills and some things. And that's why I think I, to my grandmother in that aspect because of, you know, at least I saw some positive and things and stuff in that and how she always and that's where I tend to I tend to do that with other people I tend to build them up and tell them you can do this you can be this you can you know but I don't say it enough to myself I think <clears throat> I think our life our young life experiences have such a you just when we're you know as we're growing up and when we aren't given the tool we'll figure out how to be happy then it's harder and it is harder and i you know and i like how um who was it talking about not facing something it was that i think that was you sandy and and you know and it's funny how i i tend to do that sometimes whenever i hear people arguing it just, I have to just get out of it, whatever it is, you know, whether it's people at work, well, that doesn't really happen that much, but it's more like stuff on television, I think, you know, as uh, it was like yesterday, was it yesterday? I don't work, <clears throat> and I'd gone into the break room to just take a break for, you know, a, my few minutes uh, of break time, and, and seeing this show on TV that was just, it, all it was was people screaming at each other, and I just could not be in the room. It, it was aggravating me, or it was hurting, or it was what, it was making me just feel sick at my stomach. And I, you know, I, so I had to go out, of, I just couldn't deal with it. And, but afterwards, I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, okay, so, you know, realistically, all that people yelling and they're on TV. It doesn't have anything to do with me. Whatever they were yelling about, I don't even know what it was. It was just anger going back and forth. And, you know, I kind of examined that and realized that, you know, the thing that was bothering me about that, and it always seems to bother me, I'm guessing it's my parents argued a lot when I was young. And that was really scary for me at, at that age is that that arguing what that meant and not knowing why this anger was going back and forth and what that could mean for us as a family. I mean, I, I don't even, and, um, but I, I've been trying, I know it sounds, I don't know, maybe it doesn't, I don't know what it sounds like trying to listen to stuff on the radio since then it's like you know i can pull up like some of those news stations and i think i don't know 
which one it is. I, I get like a recording on my, my phone. It's like a podcast or something. I don't know what it is. And some news channels I can't watch because they just sit there and argue with, e with each other over political crap, you know? And so I decided to try just listening to one of those programs a few minutes every few days just to sit in that, in those feelings, in those, or just, um, just be in those as a human and see what that brings up. I thought, you know, because uh, like you were saying, Sandy, is that uh, when your friend was just completely ignoring or trying to step out away from, and um, I think we do that a lot where we, we just pretend like really happening or, or we berate ourselves for feeling things that we think we shouldn't feel. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I recognized that recently and was like, hmm. And maybe I need to just sit in that experience and experience it for what it is and, and work on that. You know, I don't know. <clears throat> I can jump out here. Um, I was just um, trying to understand all the different the viewpoints you guys have stuff and it really is pretty deep. I, I agree completely with what you're saying, Catherine, about the, uh, about being real, um, parents being real to their kids instead of like painting a picture of, of, uh, perfection. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, um, I mean, I, I, well, with every one of you, um, I was writing, I don't know if I got exactly what you were all meaning, but, um, you know, yeah, staying happy all the time. And uh, I guess like Sandy was saying, your friend was being able to compartmentalize a lot and, and keep that one negative thing out of their mind. It sort of resurfaced. And, and uh, I think that's like a normal thing. I think that's like something that everybody has the ability, but like to the extent that we do it, you know, can it become like a negative thing in itself? Um, Cause we do need to address, address those issues. Right. So um, whatever it might be, um, you know, there's power in taking on things head on, right. There is um, a friend of mine had a, uh, a breakup here uh, recently and, and she was blaming everyone. And uh, I can relate to that. Cause, you know, and I think a lot of people can, cause you bring you, you know, whenever something happens, you want to blame other people, um, something you want to find some reasoning behind it. Um, but what I, what I've found is, uh, that that's, you know, that's I think to me is what I, I do as well. But what I've been trying to, what I've realized is that by, by blaming others or other circumstances, I lose the power to change it myself. And, you know, I really lose the power to make in the future for myself. If I'm blaming it on other things, then that outside of my control, then, you know, it, it allows me to like compartmentalize it and say, well, I, there's nothing I can do about it. So there's a whole reversal of thinking, I think, that, you know, or a mindset needs to take place. And I think, um, you know, when we're in the, when we're focused on that, okay, that's great. We control over it. But sometimes like, I think what you're referring to, um, Samantha with, uh, yeah, I've seen one of those shows. I, I remember turning on the TV one day and, and it was a reality show and it was just these two ladies just screaming at each other, you know, just, and it was just, it seemed like it was just about who could be the loudest and who could be, you know, the nastiest or whatever. And, and uh, yeah, I, I take on that energy and I, I you know, so I turned the channel and, um, you know, sometimes uh, I think we are of, you know, that funk you're talking about, uh, is that, is that our own energy? Is that coming from us or is that something we've taken on from our environment? You know, um, I had a experience a couple of days ago where uh, it was a bit of a off-putting moment, I think, 
but maybe it might have all just been in my own head like oh does this person is this person thinking that I was reading into it too much and I think I was because I mean there was no indication other than my own feelings that there was anything you know wonky about it and um, I started thinking about that it's like how much of this these you know slight emotional uh, states am I carrying on uh, needlessly from situations or from or that I'm picking up from other people or that I'm just conjuring up. Um, and um, you know that happened a couple times over the next couple of days and to just say you know what I don't know what that means I don't know what this feeling is about I don't know if that's true or not but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna carry it anymore it's not I'm, I'm letting go of that and just clearing my emotional state uh, of that. Um, you know, of course, if, if it's something that's important and, and apparent that it is a real thing, then, you know, you, you uh, try to uh, attack it head on. But if it's, you know, if it's something that you just feel like you're going to, I just felt carrying it on and nobody else was aware of it. It was like I was the only one that, that had any uh, perception that there was an issue or anything like that. So what good was it for me to just carry that throughout my day and have that put me in a, in a funk, so to speak, you know, so I just became aware of it is what I'm, I guess I'm getting at is I, and then I just made the decision to be like, okay, I'm letting that go. What, what, you know, what good is out there? What's the next thing, you know? So, but, uh, you guys touched on so many different topics. I'm sorry I'm kind of rambling, but it's great. Great to be here again. Thanks a lot. We always. I don't know if any of that makes sense, <laughs> but uh, but uh, we always love to have you here. We always love to hear you come out and say things. Hey, like Karen. <laughs> um, and I've been getting acquainted with a, a new to me young man. And his name is Mastin Kip. I don't know if anyone else has run into him yet, but um, I've really been taking a lot of nation and trying to utilize that in, in my life because one of his main goals is to eliminate emotional trauma. He would like to see the entire world uh, be able to other emotional trauma. He's recently put out a new book where he, you know, it's all about the how-tos and lots of questions about things so that people can experience things like Samantha was saying, you know, just, just kind of sit with it and see what comes up and what, what it's all about. And um, it says, if that could happen, it would be heaven on earth. And I realized from what he was discussing, um, see that happening. Uh, for myself, uh, I finally understood some finer that I hadn't quite gotten before, one being between the stimulus and the response. You know, be, between going to the room, the TV's on, the, the people are yelling, and between you feeling sick in your stomach, uh, what's in between there is a meaning attached to that experience and it probably was what you were thinking my parents used to it scared me and I didn't know what it meant and I didn't know what the consequences would be for the family and just to tell you a little experience like that I was able to bring up from my childhood we lived about seven miles out of town when I was younger and my parents had taken me for a birthday party when I was about five years old and the people lived apparently on a dirt road that had kind of a cul-de-sac at its end and I had no idea about roads or cul-de-sacs or any of that kind of stuff but when the partner everyone was out playing in the yard and it was a big yard and you know there was plenty of room to go look and see if your parents had come and i was eager to come i wasn't used to playing with all these other kids at five years old when we lived so we didn't that wasn't terribly far out but so um i'm looking out at the road and my parents drive by and they're smiling and waving and but they kept on driving by 
And I just burst into tears, and I was sure I would never see my and how cruel they were, you know, they, they were leaving me forever, and they were waving, and they were smiling, and it didn't even take sure to turn around in the cul-de-sac and come back, and there they were. But the meaning I had given to that is what had caused me to go and just, you know, crying and fearing and, you know, my interpretation. That was between the stimulus coming and the my response of crying. I was telling my sister about this last night, and she'd had a, a kind of an experience, and she just she just kept saying, "Oh, oh," you know, <laughs> which of course, even at my age, made me feel pretty good that she was, you know, she was aware and understanding of how it felt. And I have, after twenty five years of divorced from my first husband, where I have felt guilty for all these twenty five years for breaking up this forever family and just I've just ruined things and I ruined the lives of my children and I've just been this terrible person and on and on and on and on and on. I have finally figured out what had made it impossible for me to stay in that marriage nineteen years. And I I had I can't believe it took me 25 years. You know, if I would have break room, uh, gone home, thought, well, I need to immerse myself in this and figure out what this means. You know, I've had a few years of 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 not having that difficulty, and um, think, you know, if we can if we can figure some of these things out. Uh, you know, not everything's a big, massive deal, but sometimes we've made it a deal. And uh, if we can remember that it's, it, you know, being happy is it is just doing a few simple things. Every, and I, I was really impressed by that one sentence, doing just a few simple things every day. And one of the things is I'm going to stick a jar right here on my computer desk. And as I think of something good, I'm going to stick it in there. Because I have this habit of of thinking, oh, there's always something. There's always something. I can't figure out how to do this on the computer. And there's always something. And I'd rather be able to pull out of my jar, oh, look at this good thing. Physically pull out of my jar another oh, thing. That's awesome. Here I am. Wow, guys, it's 11 o'clock, or it's the top of the hour for whatever hour you are on. <laughs> As I know, it's not 11 where Dan is and Karen is and Catherine is, but um, anyway, let's uh, let's just share, share some and then we'll wrap it up for today. <clears throat> well... The only thing I can say is find something that makes you happy. Find even if it's one thing, you know, if it's a picture of a of a puppy, if it's a, you know, anything, anything that has ever made you happy in your entire life, if you can find one thing, just lock in that moment and you know, in those moments when you're focused on all the wrong things, if you can remember, just bring that thing around and and remember that happiness exists, and sometimes it's just a shift. Um, sometimes it's just an acknowledgement of really the blessings. Um, I know everybody here on this panel is blessed in enormous ways, and and so we all have a lot to be grateful for. But at the same time, you know, don't beat yourself up if you get pissed off over something either. Like we're human; <laughs> it's okay. And uh, I think people make themselves unhappy over being unhappy which is some kind of twisted illness there but it happens i know <laughs> love you guys see you next week have a good one i'll jump out i was gonna say um in starting off on you know how we were starting off on talking the happiness and we can in all realms of things um i got one point from you samantha as you said that you know you had to sit try and look and immerse yourself into the reasons why you don't like it when you hear like 
elevated screaming or are you doing it? I tend to be that way. It's like I bristle. I physically bristle. I mean, my whole body tenses up and I feel myself tense up. I know that to my childhood. And um, it's weird because I physically feel it. It's so weird and I notice it. But yet I've never put the attachment on it to that. Um, till now when you were talking, you know, maybe I need to revisit a little bit of that myself just to sit and, um, get through and so that way now, maybe when I get, get around those situations, maybe it'll be like, oh, that's just what that is. That's my reaction to those stuff that I went through. So that was helpful for me to hear that and get that. And then I love the jar thing with the, uh, you know, pulling something out to remind myself of the good things and the positive things and the stuff that, you know, to help me move into uh, and then, you know, get that happiness moment back so I can move from there back into the joy that, you know, I'm supposed to, uh, life is about. So um, those are the two things I got out of today's discussion. Anybody else have final thoughts, Sandy or Jason? Catherine mentioned the puppy, and I'm a video on our Facebook page for a little puppy playing with a big dog. <laughs> I, I I have it on my side, and I, I I go there. It's at the top, and I can play it over and over and over, and just remind myself how old that is. So I'll share that too. I love puppies. Who doesn't? Who doesn't, right? <laughs> um, wow, yeah. Um, I, I agree 100% with, with Catherine and, and Dan. Yeah, that's, that's interesting to, uh, you know, and powerful to, to recognize it and then, and then make the, you know, so that we can effort and make the effort to, uh, uh, I think sometimes when we're in that state of mind where we're a little bit down or negative, it can see the the positive things in, in life. So, you know, that's a cool idea there, Karen, about, you know, having a jar of, of things to, uh, to pull one out once in a while to give yourself a reminder of something that's um, personal, that's uh, you know, important to you, really give you an uplifting. Uh, feeling and uh, like find a, find something that uh, you know really makes you feel good that you did in your past or that thing that and just anchor anchor that or you know make that your go-to place um, you know I kind of think you know just take every opportunity to use any 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 trick that you've ever been taught to try to pull yourself out of it as quickly as possible, uh, uh, wondering what is going on, um, and ask ask for help and talk to people about it. Um, because uh, you know everybody's going through something. Everybody has uh, you know has something um, that they can relate about it. So. Um, you know, um, uh, but be, be careful about who you, who you talk about it, um, as well. Um, you know, they talk about, I've heard it spoken about, uh, you know, spreading your seed on fertile soil. I kind of think of that as, uh, uh, in a little bit different way in that anybody that you speak to, uh, just recognize, you know, how fertile that soil is. If it's, it's uh, you know, a person who you should be really taking their advice from, or if it's uh, someone who really, you know, to begin with, you know, so you may not get the same response from everyone, but 
uh, and I guess be cautious about who you do things, but um, but do open up to someone and and have something you do that you enjoy at least. You know, sad, if you're someone that does some everything for everyone else, or you feel that way, or it's you know have at least something or during the week that you do for yourself or to. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you. Love. And uh, see you all next week. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Dan, Sandy, Catherine, Karen. It's wonderful to have you guys on here. I love hearing your thoughts and experiences. And, uh, you know, this this chapter on happiness is, uh, it's really interesting. We didn't get into different aspects of it because it talks a lot about how you know happiness of course comes first and then success comes after that and if you're happy you can create a habit of being happiness then your successful habits will kind of form themselves because when you're happy you tend to do things that are positive in your life and when you're sad you tend to not do or you know to do things that are detrimental to your life so and I thought it was really interesting how they were even talking to the fact that happy people are healthier and they live longer and sad people are not so healthy and they don't live as long. And, um, you know, that's a powerful about right there is that if your happiness level can impact your health and make it so that you, you to the, to the extent of, um, kind of giving some statistical kind of information of uh, area, geographical areas where, you know, people tend to have a bad attitude and they, in those areas have higher, uh, higher results of heart disease and stroke and, and cancer and those kinds of things. And then areas where happier, they don't have as much of that and um <clears throat> so i thought that was really interesting i wanted to kind of bring it. and then the other thing is is that we got to remember that we we are the ones that have this control over how we feel about things and things that came up for me when i was reading this chapter was kind of a reminder and sandy you you mentioned earlier about standing in front of the mirror and then smiling it and this thing that came up for me was kind of remembering that everything in life is kind of like when you're standing in front of a mirror. If you just stand there and you look at yourself and you don't think anything about that, then you're just flat looking at yourself and there you are. You have, you know, blonde hair and blue eyes, and, or I do if I'm looking at me. Um, you know, I'm as tall as I am and I'm wearing the clothes that I sit there and say that is the facts, right? Or... I can tell myself, oh, I hate the way my hair looks. That makes me, that makes me feel crappy, right? Or I hate the way that this, or I'm overweight, or I'm this, or I'm that. You know, we, we, do, we can do these things and we ourselves feel miserable. Or we can choose to see, oh, my hair looks great today. Don't I look wonderful and blue, you know? And we feel good. And... You know, but we can do the same exact thing with everything in life. If we stand here and we look at that tree over there, oh, you know, it's all green and pretty and the birds are in there and they're singing. Or we can say, oh, it's about ready to, you know, lean over and it's, it's going to my house. Or, I mean, we can do this with every aspect of everything in our lives. So we have that ability to make good about something or make ourselves feel bad about it all depending on what thoughts we think about it, what judgments we make of these. And when we realize that, that we have the control over that, then we can choose to make our, ourselves great right if we want to. We just have to recognize that we can, and that we have that power, and that that's what we're doing in every moment of every day. Whenever we see or hear or taste or smell or anything is that we're making judgments about those things and it can either make us make us sad depending on what judgment we make on those things so that's it guys i hope that you all have an awesome amazing weekend and we will see you next week again on the saturday morning mastermind bye for now